So now we're going to take a look at methods. And uh, to do this, I'm first going to code up some of the structs so that we can attach uh, methods to structs. And so uh, I start out with my type, and I'm going to do person, and then struct, and then my curly braces. And so I'm defining my own type, a user-defined type here. It's type person, and it's a struct. And now I'm going to put in here uh, my fields for a string, and last will be a string. And then I'll create type secret agent. This is my go-to example. And we're going to embed type person in there, and we'll do license to kill, which will be a bool. And then we will do p1 colon equal, and that's going to be a secret agent. So I guess I'll do this as SA, SA1, secret agent, curly braces. So that's my composite literal. And now in my composite literal, I'm going to have a, a type person, so person. And the type, the anonymous type, becomes the field name when I'm using it. It's going to be now composite literal and then a comma. And then down here, we're going to have license to kill, which will be true, right? And then inside person, I got to populate that, and that will be James Bond. And uh, that all looks pretty good. Let's take a look and make sure it's running. Format it and run. Sweet. All right, so we've got that. And now we're going to attach some methods to it. So we've learned that it uh, our syntax for a function is func, and then uh, the receiver, and then the identifier, and then the parameters, and then the return or returns. And if they're returns, they need to be inside parens, and then our code. All right, sweet. And sometimes you'll see code like that. It'll just be represented like, hey, put stuff here. Or sometimes you'll see it like this, which means like user input required here. I'm just gonna leave it like that. All right, so now let's create a function. So we'll do func speak. And, uh, and we're gonna attach that to anybody who is of type secret agent, right? So it looks kind of like a parameter, does it not? Right, we could kind of say, hey, speak takes, you know, that argument is that has that parameter. But when we take it and we put it over here, it now attaches this function to, to that type. So any value of that type has access to this method. And uh, you could call it by chaining it with dots. So let's say that again. When you, when you have a receiver, it's going to attach this function to this type. So any value of that type, any value of that type, then has access to this method. Let's see it running. I am James Bond. Sweet. And if we had somebody else, and we'll, we'll make uh, Miss Moneypenny a secret agent, that would actually be a really nice twist. I would like to see that James Bond series continue where Miss Moneypenny, <laughs> right? Like, you know, they're like, you know, M could be like Miss Moneypenny. You've been a secretary to you too long. Your country needs you. And she becomes a secret agent. And then, like, she has all the adventures, and it's like a female version of James Bond, and she just becomes, like, totally awesome, empowered. That'd be so great. I'd love that. And then, like, James is even kind of like, wow, I'm very interested in you, and she's kind of, like, indifferent at this point. She's grown, and she's, like, lost her crush on James. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, she'll, she'll date him, but no big deal. She has adventures, and the world's full of men. <laughs> That'd be an awesome story. It started here, <laughs> but ever ends up in Hollywood. I want to go to the premiere. <laughs> All right, so now we could do SA2, SA2 speak. And you can see I miss money penny. So that's a method, and that's pretty cool. And, uh, and you can see a method. So this operates a lot like an argument or a parameter, right? And the fact that we can use, you know, that right here. 
And uh, and then, yeah, I don't know how else to say that. We have attached this function to any value of that type. We've attached this function to that type. So any value of that type, right? Here's a value. Here's a value of that type, which we've stored here, now has access to that method by just chaining it with the dot, just dot speak. And so that's, uh, that's how you do a method in Go. That's how you do a method in Go. And it's totally easy and beautiful and ease of programming. <laughs> ease of programming. Ease of programming. And it takes a little bit of a head shift if you're coming to this language after knowing other languages. Um, there's always part of the mind that rebels, that you want to do it the way you've been doing it, the way you know with whatever language you've been working in. Why, why, why don't they have this? Why don't they have that? But we're working like with Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi here. Rob Pike, Ken Thompson, Robert Gressimer. We have to say... Okay, I'm in the realm of masters. Show me how it's done. This wasn't a hodgepodge language created by some guy in 11 days JavaScript, right? It, it, it was, uh, you know, well thought out by some of the best thinkers in computer science. C, the B programming language, the C programming language, Unix and UTF-8, they created that, and now they've created this. Like, we have to be able to surrender what we know and open to a new way of doing things at Zen mind, beginner's mind. So something else I wanted to say there, Zen mind, beginner's mind, surrender, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the masters. I don't know what it was. I was going to look something up and show it to you. If it comes back to me, I'll show you. So these are, uh, these are methods in go and uh, logically the next thing for us to look at are interfaces and uh, interfaces are pretty simple. They allow polymorphism. So we're going to take a little foray right between methods here and uh, anonymous funks and take a look at interfaces because that is good to know about. Cool. Interfaces are next.